Okay, so we've got about 45 minutes in total. So for each of the three speakers, there's 15 minutes for their presentation and discussion. So thank you very much, Martin. Thanks, Michael. Um, for everyone here, yep. um, first of all, uh, thanks very much to, to Sport Matters for, um, for inviting and, and for taking the initiative uh, to set up this conference. Um, I think it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for people to get together and I believe it's the, the first of many. Um, what I'm presenting today is a, a very, very condensed version um, of Pacific Sports Partnerships, uh, which is one aspect of uh, the Australian government's investment in sport for development. Um, it's, it's, a long, uh, it's a long story condensed into, into 10 minutes, so I, I do welcome people to obviously ask questions after, but also to catch me throughout the day, I'm going to be here during the day, uh, and obviously after, uh, for communication. So there's probably only so much we can, we can pack into this 10 minutes. Um, but what I want to do is, is really talk about the, the what, how, why, and achievements uh, of, and the challenges, obviously, of this program. Um, what you've heard this morning uh, will have probably a little bit of overlap and, and resonance with what we're doing. But I do want you to keep in mind that I'm very much speaking from the, the government perspective um, and very much from a, a position of um, the provider of funds and support to organisations who actually do the work on the ground. So uh, we're a facilitator and a manager um, we're not necessarily to do is the, the, the great people and the network that we have uh, and the countries that we operate in um, and of course the, the incredible people in the countries um, who work with, with, uh, with our partners. But to start off, um, what I'd like to do is, is to talk a little bit about this particular program um, and, and start off with what it is. Um, it is as the name suggests, a partnership-based program. Uh, it started in uh, late 2009 um, after a prime ministerial announcement around engaging youth in the Pacific. Um, and it's very important to understand at the outset that the funding provided for this program was very much from a sport perspective. So it came out of a lot of negotiations with government between sports, sporting organisations, both in the Pacific but also domestically here in Australia. Um, and the funding that was provided and the sports that the funding went to in, the, in those early days was very much around sport. Um, and the development side really came in a little bit later. Um, and that's posed significant issues for us in terms of the, the administration and management of the program. But probably more specifically in terms of the expectations of those partners that we work with. I'll, I'll work through some of that uh, as we go. But yes, it's a partnership-based program. Um, there's four key objectives. Um, the first is, is just increased participation in what we call quality sports. It's inclusive, appropriate, uh, well-organised, well-run. Um, the, the, there's elements that we all, we all know from the, the sporting uh, industry around what we believe is, is a quality sport environment. I'll speak to this a little bit later in terms of capacity, the capacity of our partners to organise and deliver uh, through the national federations these programs uh, and what that means in relation to quality of sport. There's also physical activity. Um, this program uh, in its current iteration is very much around uh, some of the key aid, uh, aid outcomes, uh, particularly in terms of reducing the risk of non-communicable diseases. So the direct link with sport there is around physical activity and increasing physical activity. The other main area, and the third point that I'm making in terms of objectives, is around inclusion and attitudes towards people with disability. And in particular, the role that sport can play in promoting that within the Pacific in the context of the work of between 10 and 15% of the population in this region as well as worldwide um, live with disability. The other area, the fourth area, the fourth objective, is what is termed in the, in the aid industry as a cross-cutting issue, and that is in relation to gender and gender inclusion. Um, 
this is a, I guess, a significant and uh, an expected part of sport. Um, we work with Australia, I work with the Australian Sports Commission and the sports that we work with is a, a very, uh, it's a standard expectation that sport will be inclusive. But in terms of gender, um, a lot of our programs that we establish with partners very much use that as an automated pre um, pre preconceived uh, expectation. So the programs are developed around gender equity and gender inclusion. Uh, it's particularly poignant for us working in the Pacific. Uh, a lot of the programs that we have worked with partners on developing come from either a zero or a very low base of female participation, particularly in some of the younger ages. Um, so it's, it's important to keep that in mind, and it is a major objective that um, we work towards within our programs, I said, as a standard, but also it's something that we can work to specifically within an AIM context. Um, so, moving on, how do we do it? As I said, it's a partnerships based uh, program. Um, the funding for this program commenced for the, for the first four, uh, four years at around 40, uh, $15 million. Uh, we work with five sports. Um, they were football, uh, soccer, rugby league, rugby union, cricket and netball. Um, we're in the process now of expanding that to 12 sports over the next four years. Um, and the partnerships basically work as a partnership between the Australian Government, Australian Sports Commission. We're funded by AusAid and we manage the program. So the Sports Commission partners with the Australian National Sporting Organisation, who then has a role and a function and a partnership with the regional federation in the Pacific for that sport. And then the end deliverers are through the national federations in the countries that we're working with. It's a broad-based program, obviously. The first four years, we worked in seven countries throughout the Pacific. Um, and as I said, with the five sports, we're now expanding uh, throughout this year to 12 sports across nine countries in the Pacific. Um, and to give you a bit of an idea of some of the complexity of the partnerships, that actually translates um, to you know, more than 20 uh, regional and domestic partners but more than 40 national federations throughout the countries we're working in. So it's a, it's a, I guess it's a complex partnership um, arrangement, uh, but the government has the direct link with the National Sporting Organisation of Australia and the Regional Federation of the Pacific to ensure the standards and the approach to the entire partnership is in place. And then that is managed usually between either the NSO of Australia, the Regional Federation, with the National Federation 